Howdy folks, getting back into the groove of some of these videos. I want to kind of leap ahead while staying on topic and being relevant in what we're talking about. There's programs out there that do some of the things that we talked about, like the host name, the information on memory and status. And one of those programs is called BG Info. BG Info is a program from Microsoft Sys Internals. It's pretty useful. It's got some neat functionality. And I'm going to showcase some of that functionality and some of the risks that come along with programs like this and why you can't assume that everything is all hunky dory, um, especially with utility tools like this. So here's BG Info. We're going to run it. Agree. This is all of the stuff it can show us. You can customize. You can put a bunch of stuff in here. You can change all sorts of functionality. This is something that's great to play with. You're going to hit apply. And then you're going to see, oh, look, everything's here on the desktop. And it shows a bunch of stuff. You can see that right out of the box, it's a little uh, clunky, so to speak. But we're going to transition from this. Obviously, this is not a terminal server. Uh, this is Windows 11 Pro. It says it's Windows 11, no service pack, snapshot time. Uh, and it, you can just see a bunch of functionality here that's in this list. But if we then go look, because we are going to be eventually moving more and more into cybersecurity and hacking, uh, BG Info is a security concern. There's a lot of people that can do things with BG Info. And if you Google BG Info vulnerability, you can see that, hey, there's a exploiting BG Info to get into an in infiltrate a corporate network. Uh, this is from Veronis. You can get uh, BG Info security concerns. This is from a Spriceworks article. You know, we can go down here. We can look and see, hey, there's a way, there's a bunch of stuff of a, even this is from Microsoft, a vulnerability in BG Info dot exe was fixed with and this highlights that even some of the utilities that we can use to make our lives better could cause us problems in the future ultimate app locker bypass list all sorts of things if you you can just keep reading all sorts of different vulnerabilities for particular versions of software now how would you look up a vulnerability on a piece of software well that's something called a cve and we'll take a look at this here, right? This is a CVE details. Uh, and there's a bunch of websites out there. If we go look for uh, CVE info, right? We can get all sorts of information. Um, CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. And this is, there's a whole bunch of different utilities out there. Uh, going to MITRE is also something that would be very advantageous to learn. Uh, when you learn about hacking or cybersecurity or being some of the advanced stuff. We're just kind of leaping forward because I know some people are watching this series to get into the cybersecurity part and get into the hacking part. So I want to elevate people's knowledge along the way, even if you're just starting out trying to become an IT professional. So CVE vulnerabilities. If we look up BG Info, which I've already typed in here, you'll see that there is nothing found for BG Info. But you just saw a bunch of articles talking about how C, uh, BG Info can be used to exfiltrate. Well, it's kind of like Microsoft Excel has vulnerabilities can, that can run macros, but you're not running macros directly. You need to go write a macro and then you inject it. And if you read some deeper into the BG Infos and the ways that it's exploited is that it can be given scripts to run and it can be utilized and exfiltrated, e exploited. Um, exfiltrated is when people get in and they exfiltrate data. They move data out of the system. But let's take a look at some popular programs that might have vulnerabilities in it. Let's take a look. Let's go back to our Ninite page, right? Talking about a whole bunch of different programs here. Uh, one of the most common programs that people like to download and use is VLC. VLC is a video player. And when we go look up the video player, VLC, you'll see it come up in a different couple different options, right? Video LAN, right? We click here, we see that there's a bunch of different vulnerabilities and what versions of that software are impacted by what versions of those vulnerabilities. This is the 
not the exact version that I'm looking for. I want media player. So here we go. There's 167 versions with 113 vulnerabilities. And if we go and install this, again using Ninite, I'm just gonna get a link. Uh, this also automatically, Ninite automatically unchecks uh, add-on stuff or changes to your browser or just all of the extra fluff that might come along with downloading from the websites directly. Uh, there's, so there's value in using VLC, or I'm sorry, Ninite, even if you're using specific programs and you know where to go get those programs. So we've got VLC now installed. Let's go open up VLC. Uh, we can see, hey, uh, need, regularly check for updates. And then we go help about and help about tells us that we're on 3.0.21. So we're going to close that. We're going to go back and look at, uh, so 3.0.20, the version before this one, didn't have a vulnerability. 3.0.19 had two vulnerabilities. Let's take a look at what those vulnerabilities were. And you can see that this one, because so the, the way a CVS or a CVE score, which is a CVSS, uh, is graded is from one to 10 and over five is considered eh, serious enough, medium-ish, oh, 7.5 and above is when you get to be really serious. Some of the, some organizations literally have in their policies and procedures not to allow anything of this size, this level, um, anything, at this level, you would have to have like written procedures or policy waivers or executives need to sign off on it. It's totally possible you could have a cybersecurity insurance plan that's not going to cover you because you have a score this high. And this score is astronomical, 9.8. So it's varied and weighed on the severity and how easy it is. You can't get close to a 10 unless it's pretty easy to exploit. So let's read what this is. It's, hey, the, prior to this version, which means any version prior to 3.0.20, this CVE applies to, an incorrect offset read, read that leads to a heap-based buffer overflow in function get packet and results in a memory corruption. This is a big deal. Now, we can go find more specifics on this. We can probably, if we go do some digging, uh, find significant uh, versions of ways to exploit it. We can probably even find links and articles. Look, here's a GitHub article. We could probably find people doing it and even target that ourselves if we wanted to learn how someone is doing this type of attack. How, why it's such a high base score, score, all of these things are important variables that someone is going to see, usually when they run a network vulnerability scan or a network assessment in some way, shape or form. So CVE scans are, are important. CVE numbers are important. And understanding that just because you've got a program that's been listed in a bunch of possible risks and, and adversarial attacks like BG Info that could easily add value to our organization. You know, an a employee remotes into a machine and sees a bunch of stuff. It might still be an attack vector and we need to make sure that we understand how the attack vector exists and how we secure it and lock it down and why we, this is a perfect example of why we need to update our programs that we're using day to day because this is not that old. I mean, this is very late 2023, October 2023, and that's less than a year ago. So it's totally possible that there's still organizations that are out there running this. As a matter of fact, I guarantee you that they are. There are the number of times that I run into organizations that are running old software. I know uh, we've had to threaten firing some of our customers because they they still have Windows 7 boxes and they refuse to get rid of them. They don't have to meet any type of compliance. They just sell widgets. They don't they don't care about those things. 
and we just have to say, hey, listen, we're not going to support your organization. You've got a big, giant cybersecurity hole in it. The amount of vulnerabilities that exist for Windows 7 at this point is crazy. We're done. We're done supporting this machine. We're done supporting you unless you get rid of this device. And that's usually when they take they take note. They're very serious. Like, what? Wait, what do you mean? We're, because of this? This is why? And then that forces the conversation. No, this is a really serious thing. We showed them some articles online about how silly they are to still be running Windows 7. Um, and it, it's just the way it is. When I was working at Lockheed a long, long time ago in classified facilities, we had a Windows 95 machine that had a, a, a waiver on it that allowed them to run Windows 95 because it had some software on it. It was really critical to building out software packages for other things. And it was not connected to the network. Uh, it would only be connected when it needed to be used. There was all these, all these special things that you had to do and controls that would be put in place to make sure that it couldn't be compromised. But at the end of the day, it was still there. And it's because sometimes companies, including the federal government, buy software from companies and those companies go out of business. And that's not something the government's just going to prop them up and say, no, you need to keep supporting us and we're going to pay you all the money you need to keep staying functional to support us with our software. No, we come up with e either a competing product that does what we need or a waiver to protect the organization. So this is just a little bit of explanation on interesting programs that you might want to have in an IT environment and that there are still risks with those programs. And explaining a little bit about CVEs, have giving you a website that you can go look up CVEs and that you can understand that these are some of the risks that exist in the cybersecurity world and what you might want to do to mitigate them. Thanks a lot. Talk to you all soon.